Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over to Trent uh, with the Yuan Wu, who's going to talk today about verification sign-off and some of the problems in verification. So Yuan, what are the problems that are that engineers are facing when they're dealing with verification these days, and how do they? what are they running into when they're doing sign-off? Sure. Uh, so design verification nowadays have many problems. Uh, so one of the biggest problems they have is verification sign-off. As of today, people use uh, uh, all kinds of different uh, coverage tools to uh, sign verification, but still not good enough. And today we will discuss uh, various uh, coverage methodology. So what are we looking at here? Uh, yeah, so uh, I just uh, sketch uh, uh, the, the, the existing uh, most important coverage uh, metrics we use as of today for verification sign-off. They're primarily two methods. One is uh, code coverage, the other one is called functional coverage. And uh, code coverage typically includes line coverage, toggle coverage, and the expression coverage. Sometimes uh, uh, some company calls uh, conditional coverage, as well as finest machine coverage. Right? And uh, so all these uh, different way of uh, describing your code coverage is fully automated and supported by all the major simulators. They have a slight difference. Uh, each of the simulators supports slight different uh, standard, but all of them essentially describe the same thing. Is that based on RTO structure, I want to review the coverage information in front of the designer of verification here to help the verification process. Right. Co coverage has been a huge problem, right? I mean, when you start yes. getting into very complex design, you're not sure if, it, if you do have full coverage until the chip's out in the market. That's a very good point. As a matter of fact, the code coverage early on is a traditional way of describing not only hardware as well as the software. Right. So I like to move on to, because of that, I want to move on to functional coverage. Right? Because this code coverage is not complete, it's not really give us comprehensive information, and uh, later uh, stage of the verification uh, uh, period, we start looking at the functional coverage. And functional coverage is a specification driven. So in the process of verification, early on, once the design specification is ready, and people will look at the spec and manually write down those coverage codes or coverage items derived from specification. So this uh, functional coverage is typically a manual process. It's based on specification. Right? And uh, 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 the way to write it is, uh, as all these years, is standardized in system verilog. So there is a system verilog have a support how to write this uh, functional coverage. And this has been become the part of this uh, constraint random methodology as of today, the UVM as well as this Backman is a, is a well-known uh, constraint random methodology. Right. So where are engineers running into problems with this? Okay, all right. So uh, so engineer, this is a state of art using both code coverage as well as functional coverage. So after I compare these two, you will see what the problem is. Right. So let me compare these two different projects. Right. So uh, as I said before, code coverage is automated. Uh, because it is structure based, therefore it's sensitive to the RTL syn syntax. Some of these uh, uh, corner cases, if it's not described in the, the relation in the same expression, it's not revealed by the code coverage. Therefore, it's missed by code coverage. And then it says it's automated but have limited power. Right? So on the other hand side, on the functional coverage, as we said discussed before, is a is a manual process. And the quality requires Effort. The effort actually means the time. Means engineer need to spend time here in order to give a high quality uh, functional coverage. Okay. So and, and compare with the uh, code coverage and uh, with the functional coverage, typically functional coverage does not focus on RTL internal logic. That's a common practice. It doesn't mean you cannot do it. It just people uh, does not do that often. Uh, so so if you really want to compare code coverage and functional coverage. Uh, you can see code coverage focus on RTL design details, and uh, it's focused on uh, the basic uh, control flows inside the RTL, based on lines, based on signals. And then why functional coverage uh, focus on spec, uh, spec specification, interface protocols, and temporal behaviors of your protocol. Right? Uh, in some of the complicated designs, uh, with design and help, you can use functional coverage to describe internal logic. That's, the language itself allows you to do that. It's just because it's very high effort, people don't do it often. 
So what's, what's the problem across these two? I mean, you've got uh, the code coverage and the functional coverage. Where do people go wrong? Yeah. So, so as I said before, uh, code coverage is automated, but it has limited power. Some of the functionality is not described automatically in code coverage. Why functional coverage is high effort it, with a high return. If you don't put enough effort, the return is not high. Right? So therefore, both of the approach have the limitation. And, and as of today, when people really do verification style, they use both of them. Yeah, so I hope you use the graph to capture the relation between uh, these uh, two different approaches. So I draw a rectangular to represent design space. So code coverage will describe part of the design, design space, which is much, much more relevant to uh, the design details, the, the signal details. And functional coverage, on the other hand side, will describe another space within design space respect to the specification. So I partition the functional space into two parts. One part is the interface protocol specification driven. At the same time, there is the design specification, the specific uh, properties or uh, coverages, and they are missed by code coverage, which is this part. And at the same time, of course, you can imagine there will be a joint part between code coverage as well as functional coverage. Uh, Give, give you one example is, uh, let's say you have an instruction in the CPU design, that's the instruction, different uh, instruction opcode, you can describe in both code coverage as well as functional coverage. That will be fall into this part. So this is um, two pieces of it. What happens to assertion coverage? Where does that fit in? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so assertion uh, uh, become a, a standard uh, not long ago. Uh, we have this uh, PSL standard as well as system verlog uh, assertion standard. And in this standard assertion, I would say fall into this uh, functional coverage part of it, right? Because it's also manual written. Uh, this can describe the interface protocols as well as temporal behaviors. It also have this essence using internal signals to describe internal design uh, features. So let's, uh, let's come to this uh, design space graph. Let me draw my understanding of assertion uh, uh, coverage space. So it will be similar to this design specific coverage. So therefore, we will cover this part. At the same time, he's covered part of this uh, specification driven part of it, because you can write uh, interface protocols as well as temporal behaviors. Therefore, this will be my assertion coverage. We're looking at um, automated assertion synthesis versus manual assertion synth synthesis. What's the difference there, and how do they actually roll out in real time? What kind of savings can you get using one versus the other? Yeah. So we have automated uh, code coverage, and we have manual function coverage. And uh, as I draw before, this assertion coverage is manual, but it's the input big part of this uh, coverage. So I understand that you invented uh, automated assertion synthesis. What was the reason for that? What were you What were you missing in the market that you needed to do? Sure. Uh, so uh, uh, I was at uh, Broadcom as a verification engineer at that time. So we uh, have a particular chip which is really complicated. We need to write a lot of assertions. I manually wrote about 300 assertions, uh, including both coverage as well as the real assertions. So I found that it's very uh, time consuming. Uh, given my background, I was able to write it uh, correctly. Well, sometimes it's not correctly, but I have to debug it. So given all this big effort, the return is very high because the chip tape out, uh, so first the tape out is, uh, uh, is uh, bug free. Uh, so the question I have here is, uh, can I automate this process? Given it's high effort, uh, high uh, requirement of the knowledge, uh, the, the big benefits of it. So therefore, that's the origin why my, myself as well as my colleagues start working on this uh, topic. So when you did this, what was the benefit in terms of time savings on the design once you got the bugs out? Uh, yes, uh, so um, uh, uh, so the first thing we have seen in the early on in next stop days, before I turn to acquire the next stop, we found that uh, the bugs we found re uh, oftentimes is really late uh, of the stage. When we first come up with this certain things the algorithm, uh, so our goal is trying to find the last bug in the design. So we have several cases that uh, we, when we work with uh, our customers, we found that uh, the, when the, they have exhausted all their approach, including code coverage and functional coverage, we still are able to use uh, assertion synthesis algorithm 
to find the last a few bugs. Can those bugs be um, security holes in the design as well as, say, functional uh, problems in the design? Uh, uh, yes or no. Uh, some of the bugs uh, may not really uh, relate to the final uh, SOC uh, high-low features because it may hidden deep down. Uh, but we found that uh, uh, the, there are two cases. One case is, uh, 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 so those bugs will manifest itself to SOC, therefore become a, a high level functional or performance bug. Or some of the bugs will hidden by itself for this version of the chip. But we always uh, see the case that when you migrate the design from, from one generation to the other direction, the, the other generation, it manifests itself. So have you ever gotten to the point in, a real, in the real world where you think you've done sign-off correctly, you've done all the code coverage, you've done the functional coverage, and you still come out with a bug afterward that you didn't expect? Yes, uh, this actually happens a lot. And so this will be a, a real-life uh, uh, example. I sketch it. So you can see this uh, uh, very long code is with if, uh, very complicated if uh, statements, and final, I assign F to E. So the bug happens is that in all this, so when, whenever this A, B, C, and D are true, so we always assign zero to the E. That's a coverage hole we miss that when all these conditions is true, we need to assign uh, a value other than zero. Right? So uh, in code coverage, uh, as of today, code coverage does not report this uh, uh, scenario because code coverage already have the case, I cover A, B, C, D are both ones. But you never look at this part of logic that I assign a constant to E. And the functional coverage will require people to think through every single combination. Really, there's many con conditions here. Oftentimes, uh, you miss at a high level. Uh, with uh, a certain synthesis, it can automatically look at RTL and realize that you need to assign different values to E when this condition has been validated. And in that case, we found these uh, 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 late bugs are near the tape out for customers. So to, to some extent, you're intellectually questioning what the tools do, and at the same time, you're questioning with tools what the people do. Uh, so I'm not questioning the, what the people do. I'm questioning the, the effort people can do. So in this case, what I'm questioning is whether human will really think about this A, B, C, D, four different scenarios at the same time. Well, if you do, you will find this bug. But on the other hand side, a certain thing is provide this automation to automatically detect this for you. Yuan Wu, thank you very much for a great explanation of where the problems are in coverage. Well, thanks, Ed, for giving me this opportunity.